worried about how it goes from here on out. That's why we call it the show about nothing. There's nothing to worry about, right? That's the way I like to see it. Come on in, buddy. Azim. Hey, buddy. What's up, man? I haven't seen an episode of Seinfeld in at least six years. <laughs> really? I'm, t- I'm not kidding you. That's crazy, man. Well, in since fact, the know. last time I was in New York, I had pancakes right there at that place. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's like, crazy. Yeah, about 10 years ago. Because my, my aunt lived on the Upper West Side by Columbia University. Oh, nice. Awesome. I've only been to New York City one time in my entire life, and it was when I was around... 19 years old, I took a trip. Here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this music out for now. Um, I took a trip to New Jersey with a friend of mine that I worked with at a civil engineering firm. And he wanted to take a, a dirt bike to his brother, or his stepbrother, actually. So we drove all the way out there in my brand new little S10. And we got to um, the bridge to Manhattan at like 5 o'clock in the morning. It was just, the sun was just starting to come up, or 6 o'clock, I guess it would have been. And, you know, the skyline was beautiful and everything, and I thought it was going to be the greatest thing. You know, we were going to run into New York City, and things were just going to be hustle and bustle, and it was just going to be chaotic. Well, we get into New York City, and I swear it was completely dead, dude. You didn't see a single (laughs) taxi cab. There was wind blowing and papers. I could have swore it was like the apocalypse or something. It just hit. (laughs) And we're like driving around like, where the hell is everyone? I thought this was New York City. <laughs> and it was the funniest thing because we went to Central Park, people laying all over the, the yards, you know, the lawns. They look you didn't know if they were dead or just sleeping. Was it summer? So, uh yeah, it was actually. It was sometime in July, I think. Okay. And you know, to, to walk around within the first hour, we went through Central Park by the tavern on the green and we saw a, a park bench with a torn up purse next to it. And we went to go and, and look at the purse to see if there was an ID in it. And here this rat scurries out and we go to move the purse and there's this big pile of human dung sitting there next wow. to it. I'm thinking, Oh my God, I've just gotten everything about New York city. I need to hear right now, you know, in the last 10 minutes, I don't need anything else. I'm good. It's time to go home. So one of the craziest experiences I ever had in the same, it was just insane. Hey, did you have to do any bedtime with this thing that you had? Oh, yeah. I've been yeah. laid up on the couch for yeah. hours. Uh, exactly. It was insane. It's um, the same strain that everybody that I've met is and has had it is getting. It's like at least six days in bed, seven days in bed. And then once you're up, then you don't, you're not a hundred percent. You're kind of like, mm. Oh, I know. I'm just now getting around after almost 10 I'm days. Getting, yeah, me, me too. I'm just getting gotten out of it like are you hearing an echo of your voice? I just want to make sure I'm not picking up me, your voice. Uh, I got I got an earbud. No, I don't think so. I'm not hearing an echo. Okay, good. Well, let's get this party started. And as he feels free, just stick around for a bit. This I'll, I'll give you an idea how this format goes because honestly, it's real easy to understand about what a show about nothing is when you just <laughs> take it to to the whole part. Let's watch for a minute, shall we? Thank you. I have a friend and a neighbor and an ex-girlfriend, which is all true. But nothing happens on the show. You see, it's just like life. You know, you, you, you eat, you go shopping, you read, you eat, you read, you go shopping, you read. You read on the show? I could read on the well, show. Well, I don't know about the reading. We didn't discuss the reading. <laughs> all right, tell me, tell me about the stories. What kind of stories? Oh, no, no stories. No stories? <laughs> So what is it? What did you do today? I got up and came to work. There's a show. That's a there's show. A show. There we go. Right. Well, there's a show. That that's what I really. That's all I wanted everybody to see here this morning was. This. I, got, I think I got the the, the gist of it. <laughs> Down to this, Nazim. So many people come out here to blab every day with a show concept, or they get all worked up about. Oh my God, I got to think of a way that I could do a show. I, I can't think of a way to do a show out here. I, I, what can I use? What's the name? What's the title? What's this? What's that? And I was sitting around. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the fact that I'm no longer sitting in the co host seat over at Blab Nation, but that didn't stop me from 
being a part of that community and it didn't stop me from continuing on and making more blabs the the whole premise here is that you don't really need a concept to come out to blab that's not what blabs about people and marketers and business folks have created this concept that we have to have a tv show to be out here on blab or something as close as possible to a tv show yeah I mean, everybody suddenly become a, a television production team and, and a, a, a series host or a, a, a celebrity, let's say, or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter. And I don't think everybody means it from an egotistical standpoint. I think a lot of times it's just they want business. They want to get out here. They want to meet. Right. With people. They want to develop a business brand and a name for themselves. And that's fantastic. And myself being in someone who's been in broadcasting for a while and someone who's worked behind the scenes and developed in productions for videos on cable television and been a DJ for years, I have a good understanding of what it means to stand in front of a mic and talk to people. Not everyone has that ability. And that's understood. Um, Nazim, yourself, you're somewhat, I'm sure, of a public speaker because you've had to deal with clients in public and present what, what it is you do for a living. So, you know, that helps people. But how do you think, you know, what drew you in here to to Blab in the first place? What was it that brought you to the platform? Well, no, but I, I you know, I coming from Google Plus and, and having in Google Plus met a lot of great people. And then the reason I, I jumped into Google Plus is Martin Sherrinson brought me in mm -hmm. and he said, this is, you know, a great platform. And I really love Google Plus. I still like, like Google Plus, you know, but. In my case, it was a fact of trying to push something that me and my wife had created, which is a kind of like an, a hobby, which is Kazakhiazi, and it's not our main source of business, nor. But I thought it would be interesting to show a little bit of the side of Italy and talk about Italy. And on Google Plus, we did that quite a lot. Now, coming over to Blab, it's a little bit different. I don't think I can really. I've tried. I did one show about Italy, about talking about expats, and it was fun, but I just did not think that i think this is more for me a, a, a platform to discuss meet great people mm -hmm. i don't i rarely talk about what i do business wise because you know i just don't see yes it might be of interest but at the same time it's kind of like okay well i'm not here with that agenda now i think cindy has a very good point on the right hand side when she says but they're forcing it that the folks at blab seem to want that people start doing shows or start doing you know stuff like that and um and what you're coming to is the fact of like you know of but i think the platform is suitable for a lot of experiments and a lot and it's, it still hasn't been pushed to the edge of what people can come up and do it with, with with such an interesting instrument that is black but obviously i do understand the people that need to do a show to drum up engagement drum up business drum up their seminars drum up whatever they're trying to do and uh I don't know. It's um, some, you know, if you look at somebody like like Scarelli who just came on here and he just opened up his thing and he's constantly on, and he gets a lot of people, a lot of people coming in there to watch. You know, that's a different type of approach to, to you know to the to the to the whole like, thing. He's got like that uh, Cheers Norman bronze plate seat here on Blab where he just comes and that's where he sits and you know it's it's kind of everybody comes to him which is an interesting concept yeah. he's it's, developed it's, a, a position that not many people here on blab will ever hold because you know yeah you see people out here doing their thing and doing their shows and you see them and you're like oh i gotta go see what joel com's doing or i gotta go see what vicky fitch is doing or or whoever it might be there's several of them out here who have a, a really high reputation as it is but something about martin scarelli has developed a, an it's, it's like a fad following it's it's almost that cult mentality it's this thing going on like uh the rocky horror picture show as far as i'm concerned but um it's an interesting observance of social behavior and i think that's something that we really need to look into here on blab which is what i think or yeah that's a, that's a very good point that you bring up that in the sense that since the platform is what it is and it's anybody can come in it's a democracy anybody can do whatever they want it becomes interesting this sort of experiment that that's you know he's done that and some other people might decide to do something else and uh you know so that that i find quite interesting i i do love i do have to confess that i i like to watch shows of people that i find that i've engaged with or i've spoken to via twitter or done whatever 
in the sense that I like to support what they're doing. Oh, absolutely. You know, so that 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 to me is, uh, I think my um, my use of Blab is always basically, I come in now with the with the left hand side. I see the peeps that I know. I come into their conversations, and sometimes I plop into they're inside a room that I'm not particularly fond about. Yes. So I kind of like walk out from that. But and then second of all, then I look at, at, at the subject matter. And the subject matter, sometimes when it's something very specific, like it can be virtual reality or it can be, uh, you know, something related to web design, then I'll jump in there because that, you know, so that's my second approach to to how I, 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 like, I like Blab and I use it. I rarely do a show. I don't, I, 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 I once in the blue moon, I think, um, when I, this morning I did that, I, I walked in and I, I had not seen most of my peeps or my friends or the, I decided I just opened the room this morning or last. I said, you know, in the office in Milan, working, if you come by and say hi. And mm-hmm. Cindy came in and a couple of other came, people came in. And it was interesting because Annie came in, and you probably know Annie. She just moved to London. I think so. I'm not sure. So we were talking. And also we started, and a friend of and then Stan Bush came in, and he said, well, I know some people in London. And it turned into a little session of, like, Annie's new in town. Let's see if we can get her set up with some people that might show her, you know, or tell her at least – how the business environment is in London. Yeah. So it went from there to a totally different thing, which is what I love about the platform. I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, it, it, there's a variation in that. Uh, thank you, Barbie. I do feel much better. But now I pass it on to uh, Leland. He's got it. <laughs> I yeah. tagged him with the. <laughs> yeah, he gave it to me. Um, I was in a blab with him over at the Tech Buzz, and he was like, he won the uh, what was that called the the screencast version yeah, that day. <laughs> that, and he was sick as a dog um <laughs> so we were both in that contest and he, he came on he gave the pity pity uh, that was so beautiful dude i mean it was like just give it to me i need it I'm, yeah. <laughs> and then js gave me a, a nice spot <laughs> <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> well he was actually a second runner-up someone else the uh, it was the handyman that actually got it he first. passed it on to me and i and i i thanked him via twitter on that because he has a PC and, and, and he can use a Mac software. That was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, and I think you hit a good point, Nazim. Part of the reason I wanted to do a show about <laughs> that is that I was kind of getting just full up of business and full up of social media and full up of marketing to the point that I, I didn't want to talk about it anymore. I was kind wow. of, my gosh, you know, I've, 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 how many times do people have to tell you how to run your business before you run your business? It, it's, it sometimes comes down to that, that if really all you're doing is allowing someone else to tell you what to do in your business, then are you really even running a business right. or is the person running it for you? Right. Um, if you're in business for yourself, you should be doing it. I've, I've run several businesses. I've run six figure automotive detail shops. I ran a design, uh, service in my home for 15 years making six figures doing that you know i'm not new to building businesses i know businesses i know that i know that yeah i've been an employee also on several levels so you know and i always consider myself a damn good one and it's really just a matter of if you get out there and stomp your feet and do the job and and get the work done you'll be successful but a lot of people want someone to hold their hand and walk them through every little step of the way and they don't want to open up a book or or really sit down and do those dirty things that they they know they have to do but they tend to fall back on so and i'm not here trying to knock anybody i just want to let people know why i'm doing a show about nothing because <laughs> I wanted it to be its own organic entity. I wanted it to be able to create on its own. Um, I didn't want to come out here with a topic of discussion and say to people, okay, this is what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to talk to you for 25 minutes and then you can talk or what have you. I want to leave an open seat. I want people to come into this room with the knowledge that we don't know what we're going to talk about that day. So bring your current mm-hmm. events, bring your problems, bring your issues, whatever it might be, and, and sit down or bring them up in the chat and we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll I, think, I, I think it's a great idea. I love it. <laughs> I kind of where I'm going with this. I haven't set a schedule yet. I'm still playing around with um, the metrics of it and the, the marketability of it. And I'm not really looking to sell anything here as I haven't in the past. It's just going to be at the end. Yes. I'm going to tell you how to get a hold of me. I'm going to tell you what it is that I do, but in, in the process of the show, it's not going to be about telling you what to do. It's going to be about communicating with you and being a part of your life. And 
that that's really all I want this to be. It may be a three day a week show. It may be a once a week show. I haven't determined that process yet. Um, that's why I wanted to have this show today at 11 um, just to see. And of course, obviously, yes, I'm following on the 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 shoelaces of, of the show I was previously involved with. I expected people who once they finished with Jonathan's show may filter into this show. That's one of the little caveats that you should consider when you produce a show out here on Blab. If you're going to do something with others that you're familiar with, um, where are they going? Where are they hanging out? Um, if you can't tweet out, Hillary, sometimes it's no. Really it's very strange. I, I just I just had the same issue. I cannot tweet out. It freezes and it does not go anywhere. Let's see if Jason can help us. I'm just curious if it's something they've been able to fix. Um, I tweeted out earlier, but sometimes you have to black out or x out the 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 link now and do it that way. Let me just see if. Uh, Jason can do anything to help us. So, um, you know, we've got 12 people in the room here today, and I appreciate everyone stopping by to see what's going on here today. This is obviously uh, episode one. This is kind of a pilot episode of something I've had in mind for a little while and, and decided that the name of the show will probably not stay the show about nothing, only because Sony has actually grabbed the dot com for that name. Really? And, yeah, it redirects to the, the Seinfeld replays. Um, so I'm not going to try to attempt to fill those shoes in any way, shape, or form. Um, but I may just call it the Nothing Show, which represents something that I have been involved with in the past. Well, I shouldn't say been involved with, but I don't know if how many people out there are familiar with the Nothing Book. No. Has, have you ever seen this? No, no. It's a publication that's been around for decades. I received one from my mother when I was about, 14 years old or 12 years old because I always told her I wanted to write a book and it's a book full of blank pages and it's called the nothing book and it says want to do something about it so it's basically a, a way that you take this empty book and you fill the pages you make it what you want so I figured that's probably going to be the name of the show is the nothing show and what do you want to do about it so that's pretty much where we're going to go with this moving forward. Um, might be an hour, might be 45 minutes. I don't know. Um, we're we're cool. just going to cool, cool, cool. I think it could go on, you know, for some lengthy shows if things really get involved. Um, you know, we could discuss just about anything. So uh, let's pull something out of the crowd because this is one thing I'm going to try to do is a round robin strategy where if we get onto one topic for too long, then it's time to switch it up. Let's not spend too much time talking karaoke. about yeah, like bar karaoke. <laughs> karaoke. Oh, now we're talking. Now that... <laughs> Barb knows it too. And she's Barb has been a karaoke fanatic also for decades, I'm sure. She has probably more equipment than most DJs out there. I'm certain of that it's with her entertainment business. So um that's a great one, Barb. Um by being a, a karaoke DJ for Roughly three years. It was almost three years. Oh, she even owns karaokediva.com. How cool is that? See, now that's something I didn't know. So, um, I don't have my own karaoke DJ company. I worked for All Star Entertainment under uh, Mark Jamino, who's in the Saginaw area here in Michigan. And we ran, I think it was about seven or eight different bars. Some were bowling alley bars, college bars. Uh, none of the mainstream downtown, you know, like hot spot retro nightclubs. Um, those were mostly videographers or video DJs down there, VJs as you call them. And I didn't do any VJ work, but I did do a lot of the smaller um, pub type scenes. I did uh, the cabins and things like that where you, you had a lot of people. I mean, they were packed houses, but um, started early at 40 is when I did that career. I mean, I, I've sang with family all my life, but I was never that good at it. And I went through a divorce and decided after a little bit of seclusion, you know, it was time to get out and do something and just go meet people. So I went to this bowling alley down the street. Excuse me, I got a little bug in my throat. <coughs> and uh, I, I met a guy who was DJing that night and didn't know him from Adam, but we got to talking and I was just standing there at the, the mic with him and I grabbed the mic and I said, you know what? Give me devil went down to Georgia. So I did <laughs> devil went down to Georgia. Look, look at Barb just dropping the links here. She's I know. Got, she, she got excited about the karaoke. 
to have your karaoke.com in the books. Um, and you're welcome to pop it anytime, Barb. This Come on is in, a- Barb. Come on in. Yeah, it's in the, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not my plan, but I, I think Lena would appreciate it. If the seat's open, that means sit in it. I don't, I'm not going to lock. If I lock a seat, that means you can't come in. If the <laughs> open, feel free to come on in. That's fine, Barbara, if you want. That's all right. <clears throat> I apologize for the scratch I'm getting in my throat. Obviously, I'm not quite over this flu yet. <coughs> Stuff going on. So who out there sings karaoke? Let's get a one in the chat. I think for- Cindy probably sings, probably sings karaoke. She looks like she might she might have done it in the past. I've done it a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Laughing out loud. All right. All Let's- right, Barb. Hello, Barbara. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So is that all the karaoke.coms that you own, or do you own yet more? Oh, no. I own a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> it's an obsession. <laughs> no, it's not that. I was very heavily involved in the industry for a period wow. of time. Yeah. And I'm sure Leland knows most of the publishers that were around in the 1990s wow. and early 2000s. You're talking about like... Um, Sound choice. Sound choice. It, it was the most common in clubs, but I had a working relationship with Chartbuster. Oh, really? Cool. So, yeah. Uh, so, well, in fact, Debbie and Norbert are friends of mine. It, right. I know you're a friend on Facebook, so you'll see Debbie come up every once in a while. So right. she and Norbert split up, and they are uh, they re launch uh big mama's production studios this year oh wow that's yeah (laughs) but i would like to talk about the relevance of karaoke to blab there we go there is a (laughs) connection (laughs) absolutely Yes, I have a SingSnap account, and we've already tested with the drop-ins that SingSnap won't come feed in, won't feed in to the drop-in because why? See hmm. what it does. Flash. Ah, it's done under flash. The dreaded flash. <laughs> right. Big, big error exactly. I see that. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah, because if you guys aren't aware of SingSnap, I'm just going to interrupt you for a second, Barb. If you guys aren't familiar with SingSnap, it's a very large platform that contains copies of recordings of artists, and not all artists, but it has the chart busters, the the uh, sound choice, the music masters. They've got several of the same exact maestro, okay, maestro. maestro yes, uh, same and Sunfly, several of them. DK Karaoke. But is it like I, a I can name them all, sweetheart. <laughs> The free service you can have in the background the, the soundtrack and you can sing on it yes it is and not only that but it allows i pay for it normally when we use it as right, there's a premium service okay I, you can premium and then you, know, you can do free and then premium it's like a week's worth of premium service but it allows you to actually record yourself on yeah. video and then share it with the other SingSnap users, and they can rate your your quality of performance. So there's a lot of interaction on that site, which is really kind of cool. It's a very social network. Um, so I just it's out of Canada. Yes, so it's a little bit similar to the famous Mule S M U L E app that I've seen people use, where they sing. No, it's not quite, but it is mobile now. They have a mobile app. So oh, they do. Also, yeah. Now let me ask a question. Now that we're on this on this topic, and and you both being in the business or involved with the business, is it something that has gone a little bit downhill? Has has it lost interest in the in the in in the? It did. It did. When I backed away in about uh, 2005, I think um, early 2006, it was going downhill at that point, but it's really picked up. Yeah, uh, since 2010, it started rising again, but now it's really going big. So mm. I may be able to capitalize on all those domains finally. Smart Barb. Smart Barb. <laughs> a lot of things from the fact and I that... don't. Well, go ahead, Barb. I'm sorry. No, I, was just I gonna... don't think I. 
I think the reason mm -hmm. all right, we'll, we'll clear this real quick. The reason that I think it's becoming back uh, with such brute force is the fact that the voice has become so popular. Right. And America has exactly. gone off the air now. So um, right. you're going to find people need an avenue to let loose and, and get mm -hmm. their voice out. And to practice. There are a lot of people that want to get on the voice. <laughs> and they see it as a real possibility given what's happened on the voice to date. So it, it it's really opening up many avenues. I'm excited, actually. So I see Diana's in the room, and she's a songwriter. She's a musician. And I, when, you know, I wasn't a karaoke singer when I started. I was a, 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 a career singer who basically retired. So... <laughs> And so after uh, singing in my dad's band, and I viewed karaoke to be for uh, people who were just clowning around at clubs, being a stress reliever, and basically for people who couldn't sing and who didn't care, you know. Mm -hmm. So I took it to a whole new level with my karaoke community we did ended up doing private shows um for retirement centers and or um developments uh real estate developments actually in very uh several states so um uh what we did is it was kind of, people would say it was better than going to vegas and he actually, I mean, I had attorneys and insurance agents from around the country who at their own expense flew in to perform at these shows. So, I can, I can yeah. also believe that it's even healthier than going to Vegas because at Vegas. You know, oh, <laughs> I'll tell you, there was just nothing greater when you saw these little old ladies in their walkers running after my husband after he did his Frank Sinatra set and just swooning. Over it. Like, <laughs> they thought he was the real deal. <laughs> oh my God. And they would, and that's what they, they would dress in jewels. I mean, you know, this is the really nice, um, uh, I can't read remember what you call them but the retirement uh villas where you have to be over 50 just to have a place there actually we have places like that right here why am i spacing it out anyway um they came normally they didn't have any inspiration to even get dressed in their day but when we started those shows they got dressed up just like they were going to vegas to see the show we had women with it would be uh summertime and they were sitting there in furs wrapped in furs <laughs> no. I dressed up as Johnny <laughs> and dripping in diamonds to watch and experience it yeah, so it, it was awesome. I have but back the few times that I've been to karaoke clubs, I really have enjoyed it a lot. Have you? Yeah, a lot. Uh, yeah, here in Italy they have them. It's not as spread out as people can imagine, but there's a couple that are really fun. So let's get back, Barbara, to what you were discussing in the beginning, which was how karaoke is so tightly related to blab. To blab, yeah. Like to well, it. it's as you know, Leland at karaoke to really make it fun because you did um do the KJing. it is about building community it is. and you get to see just think about how you were when you're a kj and the people are bringing up their song slips and what happened and you could see the little groups that gathered <laughs> 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 exactly oh, yeah. but what i see in here because we have an international reach i don't know if you guys um noticed all the moroccan blabs that yeah. popped up there for a while well there was a teacher who was teaching the moroccan students english and he told them all get on blab to learn english improve your english skills there 
one of the things that we can do, and especially with these drop-ins, because Sound Choice and Chart Buster is actually available out on YouTube, and we've um, tested this out, but you can bring the songs in to one of the drop-ins. And oh. what they're trying to do is get uh, eliminate the lag between, you know, because we're all coming in from different parts of the world. Yeah. And if they can eliminate that lag so that when the uh, artist is actually singing and it's playing through Blab, it's not being recorded, you understand that? Unless, of course, you're geeky and you're recording it locally. <laughs> and then you better not be posting it without getting appropriate permissions. But it is possible to do it in this environment. But I say, and, and in working with Norbert and Debbie, the thing that about the old karaoke, and I know that Leland is quite familiar with this, it was very pixelated lettering and just on a plain background. And then um, there were some applications um, like uh, DK did some more pixelated but creative type backgrounds. Well, mm -hmm. what you can do is you can put the wording over scenes from Italy, from uh, all around the world, from, you know, in the background so people can be seeing that feeding in. But it would challenge even artists to create art for the streaming video. So I saw one, the artist would get more exposure and you say, well, you know, it's coming in here for business. It's coming in here for the experience. And when people would see the art from Italy or seeing the architecture from Italy, they're going to want to talk about it. Wow. But again, the entertainment value of having the text on the screen to a tune. Now you take, um, I know that Miana has left the room, but I work with a lot of independent artists. And then we have some amazing songwriters around the world. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way for them to test their music out and getting people on Blab to actually sing their songs. And if you're a real karaoke junkie, you want to sing something that nobody else is singing. That's a really big deal. And if you could get exposure to that independent artist and then get their permission, you can, working with CD Baby, for instance, get the permission to actually download their karaoke for you to take to the club. Then, you know, again, it, it, it's the business side of it, but it's also the entertainment side. And oh, by the way, when you're there performing at, say, in a club in Central Oregon, um, and it, you come sign on to Blab and you're broadcasting your live performance when the songwriter is sitting there in Italy watching you perform his work in Oregon. Yeah. And the people, who are watching who could be actually other pro professional producers could be seeing this taking place and seeing the receptivity of the song, the artist and so forth. So it all, you know, comes around and is a very positive that's, that's experience very, for yeah, everyone very good. and builds a fan base for the person that's actually singing the song builds a fan base for the songwriter and there's probably going to be a separate video producer involved oh, to sorry. make that all happen so I, lo I, lots of I, I have not seen too many people doing music on black to tell you the truth though. Oh, sure that i is. have okay and it, Azim is that the focus on the windows obviously overriding each other's voice because when when it first came out and even months after people were coming out here and thinking that they could get four people in a seat and one person on a guitar one person singing one person right. on one friend and find this band out here and yet that's something that you can't do because of the sound focus so that was and I'm I'm curious if they've ever considered opening up that possibility to just let them mix and, and let it happen and see what it does but mm -hmm. i don't know if their bandwidth would be able to maintain it so um, well that's what's being tested 
Leland. I've, yeah. I've seen it happen. I know it's happening. Okay. And it is when I talk about it, it's the lag issue between all of the entry points from the Internet for each person in the room. Yeah, everyone would so, have to have a good signal in order to pull it off, I'm sure. So. Exactly. I have on Google Plus, I have, I don't know if you, you might know these. Uh, they're from England. They're from Crom, uh, an area called Cromley, the Ashton family. And they do, they did a lot of concerts where the wife was playing the, yeah. the, the the, the violin, but in Google Plus, they had the studio mode and it came out really, really well. I think they mm -hmm. came over here and they tried it once or twice and in, in, in the first days of, you know, last year and they were yeah. having problems with it. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, Kevin, but you're here it's the to jump on in. I didn't let him in earlier because you were right in the middle of a, of a conversation there, Barbara. But Kevin, you're more than, uh, feel free to jump back in the seat. Uh, I'm not trying to deter you from doing so. I just, I, I know Kevin, when he gets in the room, we get things going and Kevin, <laughs> likes to, and I know that we'll have a great discussion with Kevin. So um, if you want to hop in here, feel free. Or you may have left already. Let's see. Yeah, the, see the Ashton's, icon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think he left. The, the, the Ashton's were in, yeah, in Blab also, Bill, you're right, but I haven't seen them come back. I, right. I've talked to mm -hmm. Phil about it. He told me that it was quite, quite difficult to do on Blab. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. take hands here, folks. I'm going to let you know, Stephen Rice, that's coming in the seat. I'm going to allow you in the seat, but I don't normally do this. And this is why I'm going to tell you this. You don't have a profile picture on your Blab and you don't have a bio for your Blab. But I'm looking at your name as a normal name, so I don't feel you're trying to hide yourself, though it could be an alias. Um, I'm going to let you in and we're going to light <laughs> yourself and, and we'll see where we go from there. But I'm going to get a 10 second window of opportunity here. Uh, don't blow it. Steven, are you with us? If you can't determine how to get your camera to run, you may have to uh, play hey, around. Hey, Steven. Good Mr. morning. Morning. How are uh, you, sir? Here's my the story. The reason my profile looks kind of hinky is I've been here a couple months, and I normally use my primary Twitter profile. Oh, okay. That's why I look like a uh, potential troll or whatever, but... I think right now <laughs> you guys have all been here two or three months more than I have. And uh, I learned something last night that blew me away. I, I, I think I was just, I was listening to Brittany Metz in a room or I believe. And if I correct me if I'm wrong, but, and, and I don't know if this is new or if it's always been that way, but the last couple of days I'll log into blab again. I use my original Twitter handle and, uh, I, I look at the page of what's live, and I, I my first thought was, geez, it's a slow day on Blab. I only see, like, four things going on. Yeah. And uh, I learned last night from Brittany that this is deliberate on their part, some kind of bullshit algorithm. They Well, we only think you might be interested in these, so we're only going to show you four out of, uh, you know, 20 live rooms right now. Is that uh, one of these new changes that got everybody yeah. pissed off? I it's, think I, I can confirm that. I think that that is true. And okay. I made a mention to Brittany last. I was in that room last night. And yeah. so a lot of people were complaining because they call this, you know, they, they did it to increase social engagement. And I was like, how in the world are you going to be able to create social engagement when you force people to only see the blabs of those people they're already following? And yeah. then only based on the limited three selections that they gave based on categories of interest when they first logged in, which we still can't go back and change if we decide that those three categories aren't what we want to look into anymore. So yeah, I, uh, there are some issues there. They're just playing around. They're, they're trying new things. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. I, I, think, I think the initial reactions, though, are, are not that positive. No, they don't. I, I hope not. But imagine if, now granted, you don't pay for blab like you pay for cable TV. Imagine <laughs> your imagine your cable company locking half the channels on the tier you pay for because oh you haven't been here in a month so we don't think you're going to be interested in this so we're going to lock you out of it. That may be a may not be a terribly valid analogy, but it just blows me away. You know when I go to the blab front page, I want to see everything. That's currently live. It could be some entrepreneur selling his latest book. 
It could be people talking politics. I was in a room last night with furries, if you know what that is. These people yeah. that like to dress yeah, up in these yeah. animal customs. They're becoming I, quite popular up from what I, I hear. I, I really wish I hadn't clicked on that link, but I, but you know, I was curious. I, I, I knew what it was about, but uh, I but, just, they just seems to me like they've really shot themselves in the foot here for crying out loud. I just, I, I'm at a loss to explain it. Okay, well, Bob just dropped a link that I found interesting because I wasn't aware you could do this. He I was in that lab too. Okay. I was in there at the beginning, and my parts actually I recorded it, yeah. but we did talk about that very thing about building community and how we needed the topics and we needed, um, you know, I, I talked about it being keywords, hashtags, and topics from yeah. the bulletin board days. But we need that for newcomers and people who haven't set the preferences. Yeah. But you do have the opportunity to set your preferences. By going to blab.im slash welcome. And step one, I actually put that link right here in the live chat. And you can change your choices at any point in time. Yeah. Right. The other thing. That more readily on the page where people could go back and do that. They should have a button that says not interested in what you thought you were. Um, not that ref blab thing. Because what's happening there, blab is putting that in. That is tracking. crazy what they just put down there. That's a problem. They're tracking. Um, it's a tracking. Did you see it? Yeah, it's a tracking. It, they put it in for tracking, but it has been resolving to a uh, bad uh, DNS. Yep. That's Let's true. see. And there's another, um, just so you know, Barb, I don't mean to interrupt, but there has been a problem recently in the comment section with regards to dropping links. Some Right. Um, HTTP links are doubling up the HTTP because of right. the, in the system. So you have to drop your links without the HTTP forward slash forward slash, and then they mm -hmm. will work. Otherwise, you'll see where it duplicates that, and it does create a, a 404 error. So, yeah, yeah, it's that was brought up last night as well. But the the most important thing again is building community. And just like the experience that Steven had, it's pretty daunting when you go yeah. to the homepage if you don't have anything set up. So that was a major complaint last night, right from the get go. She was hit in the chat heavy because of that. And <laughs> so Sean had actually, I'm sorry. No, I think there's also, uh, I don't know if Brady mentioned, I saw it in, in, in a Twitter chat. That is also the, the reason behind this is also to try to cut down on trolls. There's a theory behind, but I don't yes. understand how I don't and understand also that for podcasts um, to make it easy on the podcast feed. I didn't quite understand that, but remember, they bought that company. A lot of the podcast. staff come, yeah, yeah, you know, the pod clear, pod clear. Pod clear, right? So oh, okay. that's part of that strategy, but it doesn't mean like. Um, I know that you're in our BTS live group and I posted some screenshots and I said, look, you can actually put in different sizes, just focus in that thousand by thousand in the, cent uh, the center of your image. So, um, the little know, fairy so. showing, the fairies are uh, <laughs> the <laughs> black fairy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my husband on the phone, and he can hear me talking. So he'll know to hang up. <laughs> I'll talk to you like later, twinkle. dear. It sounded like Twinkle Bill coming down. <laughs> yeah. I'm on line, and I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye, Barb. Thanks for Bye, Barb. Talking. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, Stephen, other than that, uh, what kind of blabs do you like to hang out in? Uh, well, I, I'll... A lot of different labs, current current events slash politics. I if I get into a politics room, um, I I do more listening than talking. I, I'm not one of these guys that like comes in and, and lectures and sucks all the air out of the room. Lord knows there are plenty of those here. So I'm more of a I'm more of a listener than a lecturer, but. I'm 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 fat. I'm retired from as a professional photographer. I've been in the communication business forever, and I I'm pretty technical savvy for a 65 year old guy. And I'm just fascinated by 
you know, this, these type of platforms, especially I, I have a little of experience with Google, Google Hangouts live. And that was my first question coming here is how is this different or better than um, Google Hangouts live? Um, I, I have no burning desire to have my own podcast or, you know, TV show or whatnot, but I've, I've had a sports blog for 11 years. It's just a labor of love. I don't, you know, I, I'm no digital marketing entrepreneur. God knows we've got plenty of those here as well, but I'm just fascinated by this technology, this platform. Um, you know, it's been a long time ago, but there's, uh, I, I remember reading the term narrow casting where, and, and a lot of, you know, this, this, the buzzword for years was convergence, the intersection of television and the internet. You know, you know, when I was a kid, we had three channels. Now the average cable company, you pay for two or 300 channels. You know, a concept like what we're on right now, you know, could be 500,000 channels or um, niche casting is another buzzword I, I, I've heard, but that's the part that fascinates me about this platform. And uh, I, I guess what, what I would like to see would be a front page, like a portal site, like Yahoo's front page or something like that, where just show me a list of what's live. I don't want a goddamn algorithm deciding what I might like. You know, let me do that. Um, yeah. I, I, th I think it's an experiment, and and, and, and I mean, I, I think they're, they're yeah, probably, I, let's see what happens, but sure, um, sure. The, the initial feedbacks has been, from what I gather, pretty, well, it, pretty negative. The algorithm started with Facebook, and it carried yeah. over now into Twitter, and if you didn't see the news this morning, or yesterday, actually, now it's Instagram's turn, so right. Right. Uh, Instagram known so well for its chronological news feed and the ability to just simply follow along with what's happening rather than what's forced on you based on your likes and dislikes. Yeah. Uh, now Instagram's going to do the same thing. So there's probably going to be a lot of heated discussion about that going on because that's always been touted as one of the platforms that wasn't infiltrated by that type of algorithm. Yeah. But, yeah. One reason or another, I think when it comes right down to ad revenue, that's what these big developers are realizing they need to do to focus yeah. their revenues out to the people who are paying for that ad space um, in order to get the right return on investment for the whole bottom. Line. Yeah. It's hard to say, but um, I'm just going to throw, uh, because you mentioned cable television, it's kind of a little bit of a segue into where I want to go next before we wrap it up, Stephen, and I appreciate you kind of dropping that bomb. Um, I'm somewhat of a partial cord cutter myself. Yeah. Which I haven't fully removed myself from the cable network, but it's close. Uh, Charter Communications offers what's called a charter streaming program. And they give you a free Roku 3. If you don't know about this, this is only because they don't broadcast it. They they give it out, but they don't talk about it. It's available on their website, but you usually have to go into one of their stores. Uh, they'll give you a free Roku 3. You pay for um, basically one network channel like HBO or Showtime for 8 bucks, And then you choose, or I'm sorry, 15 bucks for that. Mm -hmm. $12.99 for that, and then you pay another $8 if you want, like AMC and Lifestyle and, and all the other major networks that are available. So it's um, a la carte, so to speak? Yeah, in a sense. And our bill's like $70 right now, including our internet, which is 60 meg internet. So that's a package that we have, and we can watch pretty much anything out there. Yeah. But fully sever from like that hosted package we we tried the hd tv antennas to see if we could just pick up local channels and live with that but we're in such a region that we can't pick up enough of a signal yeah which, honestly, if you guys are in those areas where you can pick up a good signal and you want 1080p quality by the leaf it's a small pad a, a, a material type pad i forget what it's it's like rubber almost it mounts your window and it connects, it's powered, it, it's an amplified signal, and it's powered, and you plug it in the back of your television. Uh, we were able to pick up at least 25 channels. Wow. Of HD television. Over, with the air, over the air? Yep, yep. It's called the Leaf Antenna. It, it's uh, about $60 at Walmart. 
and don't try we tried several before we decided which one we liked the best so we kept taking them back it was like we were bringing them home and trying them and and seeing which ones were picking up signals and and i think honestly there's another one that you can mount in your attic that's a beam antenna um that picks up hd also so don't think that there isn't a free signal out there if you want it but the the person i'm going to be interviewing on friday runs a show on discovery i believe no maybe cord yeah i believe cord cutters no scam school is on discovery uh brian brushwood is my guest on friday not here on the nothing show this is just going to be an interview uh which was originally planned for another avenue but it's not going to go that way um, i'm probably going to have q the brand as my co-host on friday i have not talked with brian brushwood since uh south by southwest i know he was a participant out there uh, Brian's an eight, nine year um, seasoned broadcaster. He won several awards recently at the 10th annual podcasting award ceremony back in April. If you want to look up Brian Brushwood, uh, he's been on Penn and Teller. He has a show on Discovery and a show on Nat Geo. And he runs Night Talk and Cord Cutters and Scam School. You'll find him on YouTube. You'll find him on podcast networks all over the place. And of course, on the regular network channels, but um, he's going to honor our presence out here on Blab. He was out here one day with the, the Tech Buzz team, and I happened to do a call in on Skype and asked him if he'd, uh, you know, come by and grace one of my shows with his presence. So uh, we'll try to get him talking about cord cutting. Yeah. Okay. And he also runs a, a well. The Nat Geo show is hacking the system. I'm sorry, I had that one wrong. So um, I, like, yes. I like the name of that cord cord cutting. <laughs> Court Cutters is actually one of his shows, so it's a podcasting show, I think. That, but he gets involved with a lot of different stuff. The guy's a—he's actually a punk rock magician, or a punk rock scene magician, you might say. And he—he he runs a, his uh, his other scam school thing is something that he does around a bar scene. It's called Social Engineering from the Bar to the Streets, and he's just a character and a half the guy's got so much going for him he's a brilliant magician uh, look up the video of him on penn and teller he did a great job leo, he's also on leo laporte's twit network the, the, the just he mentioned did, like, my cool uh, on twitter but um he's supposed to be here at 10 o'clock on friday so look Perfect. for that you know, okay get, get in on that and we'll have a great time that day it should be a lot of fun so um with the fact that we're down to the last four minutes steven i want to thank you for stopping in and taking part in the show i took a chance with letting an egg into the room today. <laughs> <laughs> not a trojan horse thanks guys very much have a great day bye Stephen. great nice meeting you all right thanks and nazim always a pleasure to catch you out here on blab because thanks, my friend I, i'm super happy that you had me on the show just to join <laughs> it was a lot of fun now if we could just get rid of this stinking cough and stop <laughs> on we'd be all good we're almost there we're almost there yes yeah, so and one other thing i wanted to mention before we leave today on april 8th there is a campaign going around thanks to sergeant tsc and it's over on your side of the pond there nazim okay he is a police officer um over in the uk let me get this thing. i'm sorry i'm starting to lose my voice now um he has something going on Yes, it will, Grammy, but I'm not sure when I'm going to be scheduling it regularly yet. I'm still playing in the waters to to see where my audience will be for this type of show. Uh, right now, yeah, it'll probably be an 11 o'clock a.m. thing Eastern that'll come around maybe up to three times a week, but maybe once a week. I'm not sure. This was just a, a put the toe in to see how wet it gets and go. It's kind of like the pilot run. Yes, it was. Um, this link here is a link to Sergeant TSC's blog. And on April 8th, 2016, hashtag don't stream and drive day is something that he is a proponent of. He's put a lot of effort into this and he's asking for people to support his cause across the globe. Um, and I am one, I'm also a very big proponent about seeing people, particularly here on Blab, step into a Blab chat while they're driving or try to host a show. Um, I got very adamant with uh, Mr. Dave Ramsey recently for the broadcast he did from the freeway, trying to tell people how to run their political and religious lives. Um, thought that was a joke that David did that while live streaming and driving all over freeway intersections and all that kind of crap. It's ridiculous, people. It's dangerous. It's yeah. deadly. Please don't do it. 
you won't be allowed on my show if you ever come in while you're moving in a moving vehicle. I will kick you immediately and I will continue to do so. And if I'm ever in a room where I see someone streaming live, I will make a notice uh, of how I feel about the situation. I will leave the room immediately myself. So um, that's the way I see it. That link, can you tell me if that actually went through? We're going to see. Yeah, yes, it, it works perfectly. Yeah. So, you know, there is a sign up there that he has for people who want to get involved a little deeper. I, I'm not trying to get people to sign up here. I'm just trying to bring some awareness to the fact that on April 8th, people will be putting in some effort. I'm going to dedicate my blab on that Friday to that entire hashtag just to talk about the, the, the system. 11 teens a day die in the U.S. just from some type of mobile phone related injury. So um, let's try to bring that awareness up to the top of the, the pile and do something about it. Okay. All right, Nazim, that's an hour. You got anything else for us? I loved it. Loved it. I love, I love the title. I love, <laughs> you know, it's not going to be the final title, but I like, I like the concept. And, and, and you know, I, I, I put the message in, in the Facebook uh, and we're, uh, those are my feelings and support for in, 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 all, in all aspects of, of the new ventures that you're going to be involved in. Okay. Uh, I'd love to let the person in, folks, but the show is over. Um, I, I can see who we got here real quick. We got, nope, he's already gone. So we're going to lock the seat. All right, guys. Uh, again, this has been the show about nothing, which may become the nothing show later. So what do you want to do about it? We'll talk to you next time. This is Leland Best out here on Blab with Nazim. We'll Take care, everybody. Later.